Welcome to Biovivacious. I'm Sebastian. Biovivacious is a learner centric YouTube channel dedicated to make fundamental concepts of biosciences clear, vibrant, and exciting. I'm sure you will enjoy this session and find the presentation very stimulating. Today we will be discussing about separation methods in centrifugation. So in the three types of separation methods in a centrifuge is differential sedimentation, density gradient and filtration. In this session, we will be focusing on differential centrifugation. Suppose your teacher tells you to separate mitochondria or chloroplast or ribosomes from a cell homogenate. How will you do that? So the answer is by differential centrifugation. Now what is important in a differential centrifugation is we are going to separate these biological particles depending on the difference in the sedimentation rate that can be dependent on size, shape and density of these particles. So in a differential centrifugation, if the density of the liquid is uniform, whichever is your homogeneity, it may be buffer. So it is going to be uniform. Now, if the density of this buffer or the liquid will be much, much lower than the density of the particle, then only it will sediment as a precipitate. The viscosity of this liquid also, we will maintain it very low. Uh, therefore, uh, if the rate of particle sedimentation it depends on the size of the particle the shape of the density as well as the applied uh, rcf two articles that a student at the moment are encouraged to read are the first one is written by a very famous scientist christian dedu he is the person who has uh, standardized differential centrifugation the article title is tissue fractionation past and present published in jcb it is a 1971 article and the second one is a kind of an acknowledgement on the contribution of christian dedu published in proceedings of the national academy of science you are encouraged to download these articles and read let us look at the task before us so here is a cell which is very nicely drawn. Um, the task is to rupture the cell membrane uh, in such a way so that the cell organelles come out of the cell. No damage must happen to the cell organelles because we want to separate them by using differential centrifugation. Uh, in the process of isolation of this uh, cell organelles is called fractionation. So now let us proceed with the fractionation of cell organelles. The first step is to take some tissue and tissue has to be homogenized. Homogenized means separate the cells, break the cells, allow the cellular contents to come into the medium. This process is called homogenization. There are four commonly used mechanism for homogenization. The first one is called sonication. What is happening in sonication is uh, we will use very high frequency sound wave and the cell membranes are broken by using this sound wave. That is one of the mechanism. If the second mechanism is by using some mild detergents. So the detergents will break in the plasma membrane because the plasma membrane is uh, consisting of lipids so it can be disturbed and it can be broken down if the third mechanism for homogenization is uh, um, there is an instrument where it has a small hole you can see from the figure so apply pressure by applying pressure these cells are forced to pass through this small hole so a cell can get ruptured and either cell organelles can be released into the either medium the fourth method for homogenization is uh, uh, there is a kind of a plunger 
um, this has a very strong wall this tube uh, the tissues are plunged um, again and again a number of times uh, by using this plunger uh, because of that the cells will rupture so at the end of it you will have a homogenate where the cell organelles are scattered enzymes ribosomes golgi bodies all other cell components are scattered and randomly distributed in the sample so this is step number one of uh, fractionation of uh, uh, cellular components this is the most crucial information on fractionation by centrifugation so this is our step number two after homogenization so you can see from the figure so here is a tissue slice it is homogenized after homogenized so you have it in this beaker the homogenate is there initially you can filter it so that a lot of uh, large debris can be removed and after that what we are going to do is we are going to repeat centrifugation at progressively higher speed to you know in order to fractionate the homogenate so we keep on increasing the speed uh, of the centrifuge so therefore large molecules or large particles or large components of the cell can be separated first so first let us see that in this figure uh, first at 600 rpm for about 10 minutes it is centrifuged so you will see that if the nucleus is getting separated other components are in the supernatant so if the precipitate will contain the nucleus transfer the supernatant and um, after transferring the supernatant increase the speed to about 15000 rpm spin for about 15 minutes and you will find you are separating mitochondria lysosomes peroxisomes maybe chloroplast all these can be separated at this g force then separate the supernatant transfer the supernatant into another centrifuge tube again increase the g force to about one lakh and spin for about an hour so you will find plasma membrane getting separated endoplasmic reticulum fragments getting separated now the supernatant that will still have still smaller molecules or still smaller organelles so that supernatant is uh, up undergone about a three lakhs g force for about two hours you will see in the precipitate will have ribosomes viruses macromolecules etc so what is important for us is you are repeating in the centrifugation step and each time you are increasing the speed by increasing the speed a different particle a different cell organelle get separated this is fractionation by centrifugation a method devised by christian dedu in the 1950s which is very very relevant even today and we routinely carry out this kind of experiments in our laboratory one of the biggest drawback of differential centrifugation is poor resolution and poor recovery why there is poor resolution because you have seen from the figure that in the homogenate there are particles of different size and they are scattered from the r minimum to the r maximum so therefore there is a possibility that a large particle which is at the r minimum um, under the influence of the centrifugal force it will force itself to get separated at the bottom as it is getting separated it may carry some of the small molecules also so therefore there is a possibility of poor resolution what do we do in such a case we have to resuspend the pellet in buffer again carry out centrifugation in order to remove the smaller molecules but this kind of recentrifugation repeating the experiment again and again will result into poor recovery so you may start with the large concentration of let us say mitochondria but 
when you purify mitochondria and the last stage you may have a poor recovery this is one of the disadvantages of differential centrifugation we do understand that differential centrifugation has certain limitations but remember if the differential centrifugation has allowed us to separate cell organelles it has allowed us to study cell organelles in details look at what is happening we could analyze them we could devise several metabolic pathways by using differential centrifugation so these are some of the biggest achievements of differential centrifugation another variation of differential centrifugation is moving boundary centrifugation let us say there are two proteins two different molecular weights in the homogenate so we load them um, in a centrifuge tube and then we are trying to separate them so the red one is the heavy protein and the blue is the light protein as the centrifugation proceeds they will slowly start getting separated as they are getting separated we pull let us say this is what we want to separate the blue protein so we pull this one and then we concentrate it so this is in order to avoid contamination happening and we are able to study this so this is called the moving boundary centrifugation what we have seen today is in different one of the type of centrifugation separation method in centrifugation that is differential centrifugation so we have seen how homogenization is carried out how then separation of molecules occurs by increasing the g force i suppose you have enjoyed this session on differential centrifugation thank you for watching this channel we will come up with more interesting topics in the next session